Okay, so hello everyone and welcome back to the How to Program with Java tutorial series. Uh, today's tutorial will be about uh, databases and how you can set up your own database server on your computer so that you can hook up your code uh, to an actual database. Um, so I'm just going to take about you know 10 or 15 minutes to show you how to install all of the necessary tools um, to actually get yourself up and running to use a database in your code. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, first thing we should do is go to um, mysql.com. Now mysql will actually um, provide you with a, a free um, database server that you can install on your computer. So just go to downloads and uh, there's a couple of uh, versions that you can choose from but I'm going to recommend the MySQL community server which is just the free version of their their uh, SQL uh, server there's an enterprise edition as well that if you like you can pay for um, and they provide you with things like support and, and that kind of thing that you get when you actually pay for something um, but in this case if we're just doing regular development and, and learning the programming and, and stuff like that then the community server is is more than adequate okay so you click there and then it opens up a screen where you can actually choose between a 64-bit and a 32-bit installer. Um, if you're not exactly sure what um, your uh, operating system has, if you have 32-bit or 64-bit, I think you can go to Start and uh, Control Panel. And I think if you just type in System in the search, yeah, here you go, you can click on um, this little green guy here, System, and uh, it will actually tell you your system type. So as you can see, I'm using a 64-bit operating system. So I will download the 64-bit Windows installer. Okay, and on this page, it just you know you can sign up as a new user, or you can sign in as a returning, or you can just say no thanks, give me my file. So let's do that, and it'll download, and you can run the application and start the wizard. So let's go through the steps to install the MySQL server. Standard stuff. I'm sure you've done this many times. Uh, let's do a typical installation and uh, install. So while that installs, um, the whole point here is is this will allow you to actually create um, an actual database on your computer. Okay, um, it it sort of provides you the means to do that with a um, like a console type application. But I'm going to show you a different uh, tool that you can download that'll make things a little bit easier. Um, so for this, this is their you know enterprise edition uh, advertising for you, but let's just skip that because we don't want to pay for anything yet. And we can finish our installation here. And uh, it's important to launch the MySQL instance configuration wizard because we want to actually configure our server now. So let's go ahead and do that. Click next, and let's just do a standard configuration. Um, this will be good for any development machine, any you know learning scenario. If you wanted to be more detailed, uh, if you were setting up your server for an actual, let's say, a production environment, which is an environment where you would actually be hosting an actual web application, and um, you'd actually have people going to your website and using your application, then you'd probably want to tweak the server a little bit. But for our purposes, a standard configuration is fine. And um, here I would like to install it as a Windows service, which just basically means that when Windows actually boots up um, here, launch the MySQL server automatically, the MySQL server will actually launch automatically, so you don't have to remember to turn it on every time you want to do some programming. Um, it's a convenience thing, and I prefer to just have it on as a service, so let's do that. And... A uh, very important step here is you need to give a username or at least a password for your uh, database. Um, you can create a, uh, there, sorry, there's already a, a default username, which is the root um, username. So you just need to give a password uh, that will go along with um, that particular username. So choose any password, but remember to to uh, you know write down or just remember the password because later in your Java programming you're gonna have to put in the username and password that you entered here so don't forget it let's say next and let's click on execute to start the whole thing so here's where we cross our fingers and hopefully everything will uh, start up nicely so what actually just happened for me was that it said I'd already had a uh, an instance of the uh, MySQL server installed um, so everything is actually okay. I just got an error message saying that it had already been installed, so it's already set up. Um, so for yourself, you'll see that uh, hopefully you get the fourth check mark there, and that everything's good to go. Okay. So now what I would recommend doing is uh, to install a, a program for um, 
it gives, that gives you the ability to actually sort of talk to your database or interact with your database. Um, and it's called Toad. Um, and it's available through Quest.com. So if you go to Quest.com slash Toad, um, you'll see here you can go to the download section. And over here, sorry, in uh, the freeware section, you'll see Toad for MySQL. So click on that guy. And then uh, just fill out your first name, last name, and all this stuff, and uh, and submit. And um, you can get your actual uh, file to install. And uh, once you've actually installed this um, this file, if I go, I can show you what it looks like. So you get Toad for MySQL, um, and it ribbits when it starts up. And now you can actually see... Um, actually, let me just create a, a brand new connection. So this is probably what you're going to do. Let me just remove this connection. Um, remove, yes, so that you're starting, or I'm starting from the same point that you are. So create a new connection. And what you'll do is, so this is actually the connection to the database server that you just installed and that should be running. Um, the host will be localhost. The user, remember, like I said, was the default username is root. And then the password is that password that uh, you chose. Um, and Oh, I haven't created a database yet. I wonder if this will work. The default port is 3306, but let me see if I can connect. Um, and it lets me. So I'm able to, hopefully you get the same uh, same um, uh, result here. You'll, have, you'll actually be connected to uh, the database. And what you can do is you can say File, New, and you can actually say New Database. And you can just type in the name of the database um, that you want to create. So like test database, okay? Okay, so, and really that's it, there you go. You've, believe it or not, just created a database. So if you can go into, uh, let's see, here, you'll see, there it is, test database. Um, this is the database you, you just created. So th it's an easy way to um, to get started and, and, and so you don't actually have to type in a whole bunch of uh, actual SQL code and um, you can actually just right click in here and say create table so that'll create a table within the database and uh, you'll see later in in my code examples that we refer to um, a table called users so I'll actually go ahead and create the table users on the test database and let's see columns I want to create two columns that go along in this uh, this actual table that I'm creating. So since I'm creating a table called the users, one column that you might have is username. And that username will be a varchar, which is essentially just like a string in Java. Um, and let's say not null because we don't want someone to be able to enter a blank uh, username because that wouldn't be a valid username. And let's add one more column. Let's add the password. And the same thing, we tab over here and we can t uh, type in varchar. And the same thing, we don't want them to have a blank password, so we can actually specify that it's not null. And um, probably one thing that you want to do just for the sake of um, being neat and tidy for a database, you should actually have an ID um, that, uh, if, that exists for the table, and this should also be not null and it should be an integer and let me actually move that up to the top just because I like to have my IDs listed first um, and let's also go and assign this ID to be the primary key of the table uh, like a unique identifier and I think you can do that here yes primary key um, and we can actually select here you'll see user or sorry not user just ID you click the right arrow to put um, ID as the selected primary key and there you go and what's neat is you can actually click down here and this is the actual code that was just generated um, with all of our uh, stuff that we just did so you see it's creating a table in the test database um, with the table name users and the three columns that we've uh, that we've indicated one's an integer which is the ID and it's not null username which is a varchar which like I said is like a string in Java not null password varchar not null and it's actually assigning the primary key to be the ID here, which is one of the columns that we created. And then this, don't worry about that stuff, that's just uh, special stuff that goes along with the um, MySQL database uh, syntax. So let's say OK, and there you go. We've created the table successfully. So now, 
I think I should be able to right click in here and ref there you go, refresh. And there you go. So there's our table that we've just created and it has a, uh, ID, uh, username and password as columns. So now we're almost ready to continue on with um, our actual um, code to interact with our users table. So let's uh, insert something into here, which uh, which means let's let's populate this actual uh, table with some uh, data. So let's see if there's something that we can use here. So let's say generate SQL. Let's do it uh, to the editor and insert statement. So when we do that, it'll open up a uh, a new tab here, and this is called the editor. It's also available if you go to File New and Editor. You can have like a blank slate if you like. But here's the code that we just created. You see that it's inserting into the test database and the users table, and here are the values. So let's do uh, ID zero, and for the username, let's do what test username, and for the password, let's do test password. And if we actually run this statement, which is over here, or you can hit F5, there you go. So now we've successfully inserted into our database. So now if I want to be fancy, I can actually, I can type it in myself and say, uh, select star from users. Oops, it did it automatically. And I can run that, and there's my row. User ID 0, test username, and test password. You could also do this by right clicking and saying um, generate SQL to, or you can say to clipboard, and you can say select statement. So then that just copied the select statement to the clipboard. So if I just say right click and paste, there you go. Select ID, username, password from test database users. And you can run that, and it gives you the same result. Okay, so if you're not really familiar with SQL syntax, you could just do it by right clicking and, uh, and getting everything from the generate SQL. Um, path here so you can you can read from you can insert into you can update and you can delete so that's really cool so now we've successfully created a database the database is running on your computer we have uh, installed the application that will allow you to sort of interface with the database and insert stuff into it so congratulations now um, if you're listening to this video as part of my ebook the how to program a java ebook then you can uh, continue on to the next step where we actually write the code that will be able to interface with the database that you just created. Now, if you're uh, not following along with the ebook but you're interested, um, you, I invite you to go and check out uh, this website, javapdf.org. Um, and if you navigate to this website, you'll see that I have my actual uh, ebook uh, for sale and. Um, and it, it really teaches you everything that you need to know about uh, the Java programming language and um, I including databases. So I, I go into a, a bit of detail um, about databases, about how the code uh, should interact with the database. I teach you how to um, set up the actual driver inside of your code because that's kind of the annoying part, the, the setup part of the database stuff. Um, as well as the code to you know interface and read from the database and, and insert into the database and that kind of thing. Plus, I actually write some unit tests and stuff like that to show you how to do that. So just a, a great resource in general about Java, and uh, I, I invite you to go to the website and, uh, and check out the product. Okay? So thanks very much for sticking around with me this uh, you know past 15 minutes or so. Um, it's always a pleasure, and uh, if you have any questions at all, just feel free to go to... Um, how to program with java.com and uh, and ask any any questions you like i'm always happy to help okay guys so take care and uh, until next time happy learning